everybody, this is Casey, a survival preacher. I've been working on a little project here, and I just want to kind of show it to you. Uh, I've built a lot of little stoves, and I was always afraid of testing them in the house. It's kind of cold outside, and I thought, well, I'm going to build something where I don't have to worry about testing the stoves in the house. So stick around. i get this camera realigned, show you what I've been doing. God bless. Okay, what I have here is I have some of this Tillman medium duty welding blanket. I get this at Cyber Weld. It's called Cyber Weld. The number is 888-328-9892. They're in Russell, New Jersey. So uh, that's where I get this medium duty welding blankets. And what it is, it's at uh, Black Thermal, um, like people use for the wicks in their stove. I use it for the wicks in the stove. And I bought a lot of it, so I thought, I'm never going to use it all. If I do, it's going to be a long time. So what I did is I put me a eighth inch sheet of uh, stainless steel on my desk. This is another desk that I just kind of do paperwork on and decided to turn it into a, a test for my stoves and stuff. But I put down that stainless steel on top of my desk. I put some of that fiber. It's kind of a fireproof fiber underneath there. And I had an old stove in the garage that I had gotten rid of. And I thought, I'm going to keep some of the fire brick out of that. So I put that right on top of that fiber that I use for the wicks in my stove. Now you can buy those, that wicking material in uh, the plumbing department like Lowe's or Home Depot or somewhere like that. And what it's for is when you're soldering or doing something close to a wall to do with pipes or something and you're using the flame solder, you put this against the wall so that it don't burn the house down as you're doing your soldering on the copper pipes or welding or anything you're doing. Anything you're afraid you're going to burn up this is kind of a fireproof mat that you lay down. It's called a, weedy, uh, a welding blanket. But it's also carbon fiber and that's what we use for our stoves. So I laid that steel down on top of my desk. I put the cotton fiber on top of there. I bought a three by three foot sheet, big old sheet, of that cotton fiber. And it's going to be a long time before I can use it. Like I said, you can get it at Lowe's or you can get it at Home Depot, but it costs you like $25, $30 for a little piece, like a foot by foot. I spent $30 shipping and everything. It was free shipping. No, uh, it was a little bit for shipping. Uh, like five dollars for shipping, but I spent thirty dollars and eighty-eight cents for a three by three foot piece. I made this little fancy feast stove. All it is a fancy feast cat food can. You cut it down, take the top out of it, bend all these things down where they won't cut you. You take some of that fiber that I used underneath this test area here. And you wrap it around your tomato paste can. I drilled a little hole in here to let the, when I set a pot on here so that don't, the alcohol don't wick out on top of the disc. It'll build up pressure if you, if you don't do that. So you drill a little hole in there. 
you cut out the bottom of your fan, your uh, tomato paste can and you make a little notches in there. Now I used my wife's scissors, uh, kitchen shears, to cut this can. I could have used my Dremel but I didn't want to go over in the garage and get it. And I used my wife's kitchen shears and I'm more proud of that than she is. She wasn't real proud of that. You want, when you put this fiber on there, you want it to come to just the top of the Fancy Feast can because it's going to be your wick and then you want about one inch that's pretty much the sweet spot one inch for your fancy feast stove on this I just left the top of that can like that uh, and never cut none off of it because I don't have to worry about it cutting me but we're going to set this down I've already tried it once without my little test thing that I set up here but we're going to go ahead and I'll just use, I use this yellow bottle heat. That's what I use. It seems to do real well and don't black nothing up. But I just want to show you how these little fancy feast stoves work. I'll dump me in about an ounce or two. Just about an ounce is about all you need for a good little test. Show you how this thing works. It don't take long that wick's right up. And you can light her up. I'll shut off the lights here so you can see how that's working. That's a pretty good little flame. I can put a couple of ounces in there. I can get 15 or 20 minutes of a burn out of that. And it heats the water up pretty quick. Works real well. We'll get the lights turned back on here. This is the second time I've lit that stove up. I did it once without my little test. Uh, I guess I'd call it my little test furnace. <laughs> I was afraid of burning my house down with some of these little alcohol stoves that I build. And because I'd test them right in on this desk and just lay a ashtray or something down to, to set them on. And I got worried that something would happen, it'd spill. And this way, if it spills out, if something would happen to where it would spill, the alcohol would go down and soak up in this here, this black fiber that I bought. And I wouldn't have any problems because it's it's a fireproof fiber. It's just going to, if the alcohol gets in there and happens to catch on fire, it ain't going to hurt nothing but the the fiber, the cotton fiber. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention, show you how that works, show you how these little fancy feast stove works, and how easy it is to build one. You can build these things, and if you've got everything right in front of you, you can build one of these little stoves in 10, 15 minutes and have it working. But when I head out to Kentucky this year, I'm going to have this little stove with me, and if we do any camping out on the trails, this is what I'm going to cook my food on. Until we see you again, God bless. Have a great day. Now, I just want to show you, this has only been brewing for about three minutes. Pick that camera up like I do sometimes. Got a nice bowl going on. And what I like about that yellow heat, get this set back down. What I like about that yellow heat is look at this here when I pick this up. It don't put no black on that whatsoever. 
I can look at the bottom of that. I'm not going to turn it over and show you with all that hot water in there. But there's no black on there from that yellow heat. That's what I use. Like I said, about three minutes. I didn't measure the water. There's probably a couple of cups of water in there. A cup and a half, two cups. About three minutes, that's at a rolling boil. I mean a rolling boil. You do anything with that. Alrighty, God bless. Until we see you in the woods and see you in the next video. God bless. Have a great day. Now I just want to show you. This has only been brewing for about three minutes. Pick that camera up like I do sometimes. Got a nice bowl going on. And what I like about that yellow heat, get this set back down. What I like about that yellow heat is look at this here when I pick this up. It don't put no black on that whatsoever. I can look at the bottom of that. I'm not going to turn it over and show you with all that hot water in there. But there's no black on there from that yellow heat. That's what I use. Like I said, about three minutes. I didn't measure the water. There's probably a couple of cups of water in there. A cup and a half, two cups. About three minutes, that's at a rolling boil. I mean a rolling boil. You do anything with that. Alrighty, God bless. Until we see you in the woods and see you in the next video. God bless. Have a great day.